friendship could be. My little pony. Until you all shared its magic with me. Big adventure. Tons of fun. A beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness. It's an easy feat. And magic makes it all complete. You have mine. We open on the main six having a picnic when Spike shows up with an announcement. Dear Twilight, I am sure you are as excited as I am about the upcoming wedding in Canterlot. Wedding? Almost title drop. But would very much like you and your friends to help with the preparations for this wonderful occasion. Fluttershy and her birds would be doing the music. Oh my goodness, what an honor. Pinkie Pie would be in charge of the reception. Applejack catering, Rainbow Dash will be performing a sonic rain boom. Yes! And Rarity will, of course, design the dresses. And Twilight will be the one overseeing the whole thing and making sure it goes smoothly. I love how all of their talents are spelled out so neatly. There's just one detail missing. Who's getting married? Oh, I was probably supposed to give you this one first. So it turns out that Twilight's brother, Shining Armor, is getting married. Also, Twilight has a brother. And naturally, she's really bothered that she had to find out about his wedding in this way. Not to mention that she has no idea who he's getting married to. Hey, Twilight, just thought you should know I'm making a really big decision that changes everything. Oh, never mind, you'll hear about it when you get the invitation. Princess Iamore Cadenza? Hmm, lesson 0.1. Who in the hoof is that? Anyway, it turns out that Twilight and her brother used to be really close, but they've kind of grown apart. He's my BBBFF. Big brother best friend forever? Oh! Cue a really sweet song about their relationship. My big brother, best friend forever. Like two peas in a pod, we did everything together. It is so cute. We shared our dreams. I miss him more than I realized, it seems. But it turns more bittersweet at the end when she starts to worry that she's lost that. My big brother, best friend. Anyway, on the train, it's revealed that Spike will be in charge of the bachelor party. I have just one question. What's a bachelor party? That'll be interesting. Come on now. You're his sister. He'll always make time for you. It's kind of a subtle thing, but I love AJ talking to Twilight as one little sister to another. But once they get to Canterlot, they find that security has been amped up. Royal weddings do bring out the strangest ponies. <laughs> Case in point. And you got a big brother to go congratulate. Yeah, congratulate. And then give him a piece of my mind. I love how that one guard looks like he's afraid of her. Now we finally get to meet Shining Armor. Twily! Oh, I missed you, kid. How was the train ride? I... How dare you not tell me in person that you were getting married? I'm your sister for pony's sake. Princess Celestia has requested a major increase in security. It turns out that the security isn't for the wedding. A threat has been made against Canterlot. We don't know who's responsible for it, but Princess Celestia asked that I help provide additional protection. And he demonstrates that it's his magic that has formed the protective bubble around Canterlot, and keeping it up takes a lot of work. Twilight gets it now, but she's still kind of hurt. Am I not that important to you anymore? Of course you're important to me. But I'd understand if you didn't want to be my best mare now. Best face. I'd be honored. Aw, oh, they've made up. But I'm still pretty ticked you're marrying some pony I don't even know. Except that it turns out that she does. Princess Miyamore Cadenza is Cadence, your old foal sitter. Cadence is only the most amazing pony ever. Aw, oh, she's so nice. I'm the one who's lucky, Twilight. <laughs> you're a princess. I'm just a regular old unicorn. <laughs> some bronies just died a little inside. Sunshine, sunshine, lady likes the wake. Clap your hooves and do a little shake. So much cute. Anyway, it seems that Cadence's special talent is literally spreading love. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. Cadence! Sunshine, sunshine, ladybugs awake. Clap your hooves and do a little shake. What are you doing? Awkward. But it seems that she's changed a little. They're still a cute couple, though. We couldn't be more excited to have you here. Right, dear? Absolutely. 
Later on, Caden starts to apparently show her true colors. I love, love, love them! <laughs> She's become a big phony who insists on being called by her full name all the time. I do, do you? I do! I compare Spike to a fanfic writer, but he hasn't taken it far enough yet. Anyway, Cadence doesn't like the refreshments that Applejack made, but she makes a half-assed attempt to pretend she does. She complains about the dresses that Rarity is making. And those should be a different color. I think they're lovely. Me too. I love them. Oh my god, Lyra spoke. Maybe her name should be Princess Demandy Pants. And she says this to Pinkie Pie. Perfect! If we were celebrating a six-year-old's birthday party. <gasps> Thank you! Rest, my sister. As always, I will guard the night. Oh my god, the writers remembered that Luna exists. Anyway, that evening, Twilight tries to tell the rest of the main six about her impressions of Cadence. At first they're shocked, and then they just make excuses for her and figure that she's probably just nervous about the wedding. She did raise her voice at one of my birds during rehearsal. See? Rude! But he was singing really off-key. <laughs> And they end up thinking that Twilight is just overreacting. You're all just too caught up in your wedding planning to notice that maybe there shouldn't even be a wedding! Yeah, I know. This sounds a bit familiar. Later on, she goes to talk to Shining Armor. Your big brother's looking pretty good, don't you think? He's so adorable. We need to talk. Anyway, she doesn't really get a chance to because Cadence shows up. Could I speak to you for a moment, dear? Better see what she wants. What was that about? So she picks a fight with him over what he's wearing and he ends up with a headache. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Anytime magic is green on this show, it's a bad sign. She's downright evil! Who goes there? Stay indoors, Twilight Sparkle. I remember how that became a meme for a little bit. Really, she's just saying it because they're in dangerous times, but it sounds funny out of context. Look both ways before crossing the street, Twilight Sparkle. Brush your teeth after every meal, Twilight Sparkle, etc. Shining armor's in real trouble! Anyway, she goes to tell the main six and finds out that they're now bridesmaids, replacing the previous ones. But she did tell us that she would love, love, love it if we'd fill in for them. Seeing as we've been working so hard and everything. And they're perfectly happy with that, and it looks like they're not gonna listen to Twilight. The next day, they're doing the rehearsal, but Twilight isn't there. I'm here! Oh, there she is. I've got something to say. She's evil! Yeah, this isn't the best way to go about this, Twilight. I've already given out Best Face Award, but Rarity's expression here is pretty good, too. She's obviously done something to her bridesmaids. And if that wasn't enough, I saw her put a spell on my brother that made his eyes go all... Cadence looks worried, though. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> because you're evil! And if I don't stop you, you're gonna ruin my brother's life! But that goes over about as well as you'd expect. But it turns out that Shining Armor has an answer for each of Twilight's concerns. Cadence hasn't been casting spells on me. She's been using her magic to heal me. And if she hasn't been on her best behavior with your friends, it's because with me being so busy, she's had to make all the decisions about the wedding. I mean, maybe you should have talked to him first, Twilight. In fact, if I were you, I wouldn't show up to the wedding at all. I notice Pinky's still bouncing. <laughs> You I was... have a lot to think about. Damn, that's rough. I could have gained a sister. So now Twilight sees the error of her ways and she realizes that now she really has lost her brother. And now we'll never do anything together. Oh, I'm sorry. You will be. Except that Twilight was right all along and she gets dragged into hell. Okay, not really, but tell me that's not what it looks like. Part 2 picks up with Twilight having been imprisoned underground. Cadence shows up as reflections in various shiny surfaces in the cave, taunting Twilight. And no one will ever think to look for you either. Most ponies have forgotten that these caves even exist. Don't you dare do anything to my brother, you... you monster! Which distresses her so she ends up destroying a lot of it. Revealing... The real Cadence. The Cadence who brought you down here was an imposter. But Twilight doesn't believe her at first, so... Pure hooves and do a little shake. Oh my god, she looks awful. How long has she been down there? Would she have starved to death if not for Twilight? We have to get out of here. Anyway, she and Twilight are going to try to find a way out so that they can save Shining Armor. 
Meanwhile, imposter Cadence is getting ready and another great song kicks in. Every pony will gather around, see I look lovely in my gown. What they don't know is that I have fooled them all. We do get a small glimpse at what she really looks like though. But instead of having cake with all my friends to celebrate my wedding bells, they may not ring for me at all. Priorities, Cadence. I don't fear that I may lose him to one who wants to use him, not care for love and cherish him each day. That's better. Anyway, Twilight and Cadence find a mine car, which helps them progress a lot faster. But now the wedding is starting. Shining armor will be mine, all mine. Oh, she's so delightfully evil. Well, at least they didn't forget about Twilight's teleport ability. Why were us literally in two places at once? I thought that was Bon Bon's thing. Anyway, Twilight and Cadence somehow get past them. I, want it! I love that. I, I don't understand. How can there be two of them? It turns out that imposter Cadence is a changeling. She takes the form of some pony you love and gains power by feeding off your love for them. Now that she's been outed, she finally reveals herself and it is amazing. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> right, you are, princess. Not only is she a changeling, but the changeling queen. Her name isn't mentioned in this episode, but it was confirmed later that it's Chrysalis. It turns out that changelings feed off of love, hence why she replaced Cadence, who not only was well-loved by everyone, but is basically considered the embodiment of it. Also, fun fact, Mi Amore Cadenza is Italian for I Love Cadence, so anytime someone said that name, they were professing their love for her, which meant just that much more love for Chrysalis to feed off of. Shining Armor's protection spell will keep them from ever even reaching us. <laughs> oh, I doubt that. It also turns out that she's been weakening Shining Armor all this time, and his shield is slowly giving out. Meanwhile, the other changelings are chipping away at it from the other side. He may not be my husband, but he is under my total control now. I don't even want to think about all the fan fiction that's probably been written about this. First, we take Canterlot, and then all of Equestria! No. Oh, but Princess Celestia has something to say about all of this. Now that you have so foolishly revealed your true self, and they literally lock horns. Oh my god, are we finally gonna be able to see Princess Celestia kick ass? Oh, I guess not. The wharf effect strikes again. Shining Armor's love for you is even stronger than I thought. Consuming it has made me even more powerful than Celestia! Oh, I see, Wharf had the flu. I love Rarity trying to save the dresses. So the main six go to try to get the elements of harmony, but the changelings are in the way. Looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way! Time for a pony brawl. Eventually, for now the changelings are just trying to confuse them. Now it's time for a pony brawl. Except for Fluttershy who manages to get out of fighting. Apparently changelings aren't very smart. Twilight has a projectile that can stun them. Do me, do me. Nah, I've seen better. So now she's a Gatling gun. It's always a good episode when ponies kick ass. Except that now a lot more are coming. But that doesn't work. So now what? Well, it was nice of Chrysalis to give Celestia her crown back, at least. Twilight here was suspicious of my behavior all along. Sorry, Twi. We should have listened to you. It's not your fault. Eh. She fooled every pony. Mm, I did, didn't I? So now it's time for the Queen's villain boast, which ends up being a reprise of this day area. Every pony I'll soon control. Every stallion, mare, and foal. Who says a girl can really have it all? While she's distracted with that, Twilight helps Cadence out of her bonds, and she uses her love magic on shining armor. Is, is the wedding over? It's all over! Your spell! Perform your spell! But his magic has run out. My love will give you strength. <laughs> what a lovely but absolutely ridiculous sentiment. Ugh, I'm with Chrysalis on that one. But it works. 
They are now a power couple. Go Shining Armor and Cadence. <laughs> Looks like the changelings are blasting off again! They can fly, they'll be fine. So the wedding is back on now, and of course the real Cadence is a delight and loves what everyone makes, including Pinkie Pie's dance moves. I love Twilight straightening Shining Armor's sash. Not to mention the proud parents. Wow, that's a pretty impressive train on that dress. How did you get someone as amazing as Cadence to marry you? I told her she wouldn't just be gaining a husband, she'd be getting a pretty great sister too. Aww. Meanwhile, AJ is all, I saved Equestria, I'll do what I want. Anyway, at this point, it's a typical wedding that goes off without a hitch, so to speak. I now pronounce you Mayor and Colt. This is your victory as much as theirs. You persisted in the face of doubt. <laughs> it's all well and good to commend Twilight, but I think an apology of some sort was in order. Oh well, let's watch some ponies make out. Rainbow Dash, that's your cue. Pretty impressive that she can do a sonic rain boom from the ground now. Last time she had to be in free fall to pull it off. Hello, every pony. Did I miss anything? Oh, Luna. Final scratch cameo as one more song starts up. Love is in blue, a beautiful bride, a handsome groom. It's all right, cheerful but kind of generic sounding. I love Spike dancing with Sweetie Belle. Also Rainbow Dash with Soren. Also Rarity with Fancy Pants. I'm just doing so much shipping right now. Love you, Twilight. Love you too, BBBFF. These two are just so cute. <laughs> Jeez, Rarity. Well, Fancy Pants is right there, so may as well make it official. Just saying. Just wait until you see what I have planned for the bachelor party. You're a little late, Spike. <laughs> and so ends a Canterlot wedding. While I'm fine with the series being mostly slice of life, I sometimes wish we didn't only get epic episodes like this for season premieres and finales, because they are so much fun. Then again, if we did, they wouldn't have as big of an impact. So I know some people have some complaints about this episode, so let me get that out of the way. Yes, it's kind of weird that everyone seems to have forgotten what they learned in Lesson Zero. In fairness, they do set it up to show Twilight being really angry about finding out about her brother's marriage through an invitation, and that she's worried about losing him, and her friends don't see her first interaction with Cadence, so I can kind of see how Twilight could come across as irrational to them, but again, the lesson in Lesson Zero is that you shouldn't just brush off your friend's concern, even if you think they're overreacting. So I concede that that part of it was handled badly, though it doesn't ruin the episode for me or anything. Another complaint I've heard is that two new characters are introduced, and we're expected to care about them after only knowing them for a little while. My answer to that is that I don't think this episode is really about Shining Armor and Cadence in that regard. It's about Twilight. We wouldn't necessarily care about them on our own, but we can identify with Twilight, and if it were us, we wouldn't want to lose a brother and an old friend. That's how I see it anyway. Other than that, Princess Celestia gets warped, and... I admit I was kind of disappointed in that bit when I first saw this. I really was looking forward to her kicking ass. But I kind of understand why they do this sort of thing with her. They can't just have the mother figure just coming to the rescue. It takes the power away from the main six. Though I guess it'd be nice if she put up more of a fight before getting warped. Either way, the show has kind of done it a little too much, so Princess Celestia does end up looking pretty weak, despite the fact that she's supposed to be powerful. At this point, I just kind of laugh it off. The only other complaint I can think of is Twilight suddenly having a brother that the other main six didn't know about. But that's not that weird. They're grown up and don't live together. In fact, they live in different cities and don't see each other that much. I can see how he might not have come up in conversation. Also, this is one of those things that TV shows do all the time. Just be glad that he didn't show up only in this episode and never get mentioned again. But enough of that. Even if she doesn't properly reveal herself until about a third of the way into part two, Queen Chrysalis is the real star of the show. When I first saw this episode, I totally lost it here. Granted, I do watch this show through the lens of realizing it's aimed at kids, so I was just completely caught off guard by how disturbing her design is, keeping that in mind. 
She has about the same proportions as Princess Celestia, but she has holes in her wings, hair, and legs. That's just wrong. And yet, she has big eyes, so she's also kind of cute. Then again, those eyes are so big, they take up like 90% of her face, that they also add to the creepiness. Either way, they definitely topped Nightmare Moon. She was intimidating, but Chrysalis is just flat out creepy. Also, I love two of the three songs in this. BBBFF is really cute and heartwarming, and This Day Area is a great villain song. Also, it has a chord progression that's called a deceptive cadence, and that's brilliant. Like I said, Love Is In Bloom isn't bad per se, it's nice and cheerful, but it has kind of a generic pop song vibe to me. So yeah, not a perfect episode, but a great epic season finale. It might actually be my favorite, if only because it basically changed how season finales are handled on this show. Remember, the season one finale was about the main six going to the gala and wrecking everything. And with that, I'm done with season two. I hope you enjoyed it. Next up is the season three premiere of The Crystal Empire. See you then. your PFFs, Pony Friends Forever, 